What's up, YouTube? This is Urban Sportsman again. I'm coming to you guys with my first match to hatch of the year. Uh, what particular bait am I matching up and showing you which things they're going to match with? Pretty simple. My favorite bait, to be quite honest with you, Bucktail Jig. Um, this guy is in olive and black. I, probably one of the more common colors I use for smallmouth. Um, but the most common color used, I gotta see if I have one in here, um, worldwide, and you can't go wrong with it, white. White. White with a red neck tied in and a white bucktail. I don't care what you're fishing for, you're gonna catch fish on it. I don't care if you're fishing for a striper, bluefish, um, bass, uh, name it name it they, they bucktails catch fish they are by far and from my experience the most versatile baits you're going to find period uh, a lot of people put these guys in the category of being a cold water bait something that you only fish once it gets down to a certain temperature you can't be further from the truth i personally fish them year round especially on small rivers for smallmouth i'll slam smallmouth all year long on bucktail jigs pretty much these things are smallmouth candy um, so with that being said, a couple of ways you want to think, a couple of things you want to do with uh, bucktail jigs. You can tie these guys anywhere from 1 16th of an ounce all the way up to 8 ounces, depending on what you're fishing for, if it's in fresh water or salt water. Um, there are several different styles of jigs that you can use uh, when you're tying them on. I'm actually going to have a follow-up video to this, and I'll show you the, the full list of all the jigs that you can use. Me personally, for what I'm doing, I'm using walleye head jigs, which are, I can show you one up close. I'm hoping you can see it well with the camera, but it's this guy. It's pretty simple. This guy is a quarter of an ounce, if I'm not mistaken. No, nope. yeah, this guy's a quarter of an ounce. You know, I tie him up, personally tie him up to a half an ounce because the Detroit River is deep and has a lot of flow. And when I'm walleye fishing with him, I don't want that thing to get blown down river for me. I want it to be vertical right below where I'm fishing. So I'll tie them pretty large and I'll tie them pretty small depending on what application I'm using. Uh, as far as species that you're matching with the um, bucktail jigs, it's always going to be bait fish. I don't care what bait fish are in your area, match the color of what you're tying according to that bait fish. For me, emerald shiners are huge here. Uh, especially during the silver bass run here, the emerald shadows will run upstream first and lay their eggs and right on their tail, you'll have this huge run of silver bass. What colors am I tying for the emerald shadows? Uh, I'm going with that white with the red neck that I showed you. Another thing I'm going to throw, this guy. White and blue. This is a 1 8 ounce. White and blue, I'm throwing that all day. Um, white and pink, brown and yellow for those is actually a really good color. Uh, uh, the next thing that I'm looking at as far as fish that I'm matching up with in my area, shad. Um, the Great Lakes have shad in them, a lot of lakes in my area have shad in them, so I'm throwing a lot of those white on white bucktails. Um, they're a great matchup. They're definitely a great matchup during the shad di die off. So around when that temperature, water temperature gets to around 43 to 45 degrees, I bring a bucktail out. Or when I'm out on the lake and I'm on my kayak and I see bass herding bait fish to the top, I'm bringing a bucktail out. I want to be able to pitch that thing right in the middle of that bait ball, let it drop just below and start twitching. And every time I'm catching something, if it's not a bass, it's a walleye, a pickerel, or a smallmouth. I'm always catching something with a bucktail. The next thing that I also have to mimic, well, that bucktails mimic um, in my area, sculpins and gobies. If you're anywhere near the, go in, near the Great Lakes, um, you know about gobies. They're an invasive species, but what you probably don't know about is sculpin. Pretty much that's his freshwater cousin, and they're pretty closely related, but they look, so they look a lot alike. As a result, 
one bucktail, one bucktail that mimics one will definitely mimic the other because they're so closely related. They look so much alike. Uh, for me, I'm going with olive and black. This is a small guy. This is a 1 16th ounce. Actually, I got a bigger one in here, so make it maybe a little better for you guys to see. Olive and black. That's what I'm going with. I haven't put eyes on this guy yet. Um, however, I'll put some on there when it's time to go fishing. It's not a big concern of mine. Olive and black is going to be a great color pattern for um, when you're matching scoping and gobies. Anything that looks like a scoping or goby. Mad times are another thing that I'm matching. We got quite a few of those in some of the smaller rivers here. So that's another one. I'm going straight back to that olive and black. And another color pattern that I find works really, really well um, is yellow and brown when I'm matching gobies, mad times, or um, sculpin. The yellow and brown does really well. What I've noticed is more often than not, if I have more brown than yellow, and the yellow on the bottom is just a small strip, I do even better than having it half and half when I tie them that way. Uh, but that's just a killer pattern for me. And like I said, it's smallmouth candy. I hit the rivers with bucktails and do great. Another thing that they match for people on the salt water, when I lived in Connecticut and New York, both places, this is what I used when I was chasing bluefish, striped bass, or um, fluke. In that, when I lived there, I didn't have a boat. So for me, it was I was fishing off the shore. You know, I was fishing off the shore, and I, I had to do what I had to do. And the bucktail gave me the one of the longer casts outside of some of those big heavy plugs, which I sucked at casting. You know, I'm a Detroit boy, so I wasn't there that long. And we don't care. We didn't cast big, huge three-ounce poppers. I had to learn how to really perfect doing that without tearing anything up, and particularly hooking myself. Um, so, bucktails is what I went with. I was familiar with them. I knew how to use them, and I did pretty well. You know, especially when the peanut butter were were running really thick. Um, so, what am I matching on salt water? Any bait fish. You're matching uh, needlefish. Well, not so much needlefish because they're really long. But you are matching juvenile sand eels. You're matching peanut bunker. Um, on the Great Lakes, you're matching owl wives. Like I said, these things, man, when you're matching things like that, you're just matching that color pattern. You can get as close as possible as you want. For me, on the salt water, two colors work really, really well white with the red neck with the red tie in neck and another color that worked really well is this guy chartreuse and white chartreuse and white worked amazing i started tying chartreuse and white uh, because i my first introduction to fly fishing for striper and bluefish was with a fly rod and what we used the most was chartreuse and white uh clouds and minnow perfect match to that. Uh, I wouldn't use this little bitty one sixteenth ounce, but I would definitely go all the way up to, for me, I think one and a half ounces was the, 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 the largest I would tie. Um, another thing that worked really well as far as color patterns on the salt water was white and pink. And I got lucky one year, excuse me, and I actually hit a cinder worm hatch in the salt water. And if you know what a cinder worm is, they're, they're like a reddish pink color. So I went home and tied up some red and some pink, and I slammed the schoolie uh, striped bass on those. Like I said, they just, bucktails match everything, man. If you don't have anything else in your box, make sure you go tie you on some bucktails. I, I don't, you, you can't, you can't go wrong. You can fish them year round. I don't care what anybody says. You can fish them year round. They're not just a wintertime pattern. They're a year round pattern if you're doing this smart. Uh, this is just the match the hatch portion of this. The next video that I'm going to post will be talking about freshwater applications for the smaller ones, the smaller bucktails, which is going to be 1 16th to about 1 ounce, maybe 1 and a half ounce. And I'll go through and talk about the different species. I'll talk about uh, what rods and reels you want to use for them, what type of tackle you want to use, um, and not only that, but how you want to go about jigging these things, what, what, what areas of the water column you want to fish them in. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more uh, and be on the lookout like I said the next one will be freshwater applications for bucktails and then the one beyond that will be saltwater applications that I'll go into a lot more detail with the gear that you need and everything uh, beyond that like I said thanks again and have a great day tie lines everybody